Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson, and this talk is about the so-called equity risk premium, and we will see that it is, in fact, a myth. So what is the equity risk premium? Well, there are different ways of calculating it, but the basic idea is that we take the historical average of the stock market return minus the government bond yield. So we could write it mathematically something like this. The idea is then that we add this average the so-called equity risk premium to the current yield on the government bond, which is then believed to forecast the future stock market return. The question is, does it actually work? So let's look at some data. And here the data goes from the 1950s to 2013 or so. This is for the annual returns on the S&P 500 stock market index, and we ignore the dividend payouts. Similarly, we ignore the changes in bond prices. For each data point, we simply subtract the return on the S&P 500 with the yield on the 10-year government bond for the United States. We get this data here. It ranges from about minus 40 to plus 40%. And that is a difference between the yield in the government bond and the return on the S&P 500. We have the distribution in a histogram here, and clearly there's it's not a constant, and it changes sort of randomly over time. So now let's look at the return for holding the S&P 500 index for a decade, and then we take the annualized rate of return over that decade, and we subtract the yield on a 10-year US government bond. So again, we have the data range from 1957 to 2013, and this is somewhat more ordered and we see it starts up at maybe a 5% equity risk premium, that is percentage points, and then it drops to minus 5% in the late 1960s, and in the mid-1970s it's back at 5% again, drops again, raises again, and then around year 2000, maybe 1999, 2000, it is minus 10%. So what this means is that if we had bought the S&P 500 index in year 2000, and we had held it until year 2010. And in year 2000, we had also bought a 10-year US government bond. Then the difference would have been about minus 10%. So the S&P 500 index would have had an annualized rate of return that was minus 10% or 10 percentage point lower than the annual rate of return on the US government bond. So similarly, if we had bought it in say, let's say 1977, where the equity risk premium was about five percentage points, if we had bought the S&P 500 index in this year, and we have bought a government bond yield, which matured in 10 years, then we would have made an annualized rate of return of 5% more on the S&P 500 than on the government bond. So we see the histogram of the distribution over here. As we noted on the previous slide, there's no constant equity risk premium. It varies widely and it varies seemingly unpredictably. Now look at the scatter plot. So in the left scatter plot, we have it for single year returns of the S&P 500. And for the right scatter plot, we have it for holding the S&P 500 for a decade and then taking the annualized return of that. So on the left plot, we have the US government bond yield in the bottom going from 2% to over 14%. And the S&P 500 return for holding it a single year is goes from a minus 40% to plus 40%. We have made a linear fit and it's not a very good fit. There's no obvious relationship between these two yields. It is really sort of random. Now let's look at the right plot where we again we have the US government bond yield in the bottom and it again goes from 2% to more than 14%. The annualized rate of return of holding the S&P 500 for a decade goes from minus 5% to more than plus 15%. There's a complex relation between the US government bond yield and the annualized rate of return on the S&P 500, the tendency is that 
they increase together. So if we have a low US government bond yield, then we have a low or maybe even a negative annualized rate of return on the S&P 500. And if the US government bond yield is high, then we have a tendency for a high rate of return on the S&P 500 when we hold it for a decade. But it is not a simple relation. So the straight line doesn't fit very well. There is a relation, but it's not a straight line. The conclusion is that historically there has been no consistent equity risk premium between the S&P 500 stock market index and US government bonds. The future stock market returns cannot be reliably predicted from merely adding the historical average equity risk premium to the current yield on long-term government bonds. The plots in this talk were taken from this paper and it can be found on this website and the link is also provided be below the video.